Hi everyone, I've shown you some pure mathematics before, so I thought it would be a good idea to show you what some applied math looks like. And I have another exam here, and this is supposed to be an example of what you could expect to see if you studied, say, engineering mathematics. It's going to cover two topics, linear algebra and differential equations. And because it's covering these two topics, Neither of them are going to be too in-depth, but it will give you sort of a view of what both of these topics look like. And the questions that are in here are things that I think you can expect to see if you major in physics, math, or engineering. In my opinion, this isn't going to be too hard of an exam. Um, the questions are a bit more straightforward. There are less proofs, which is one of the things I struggle the most on in math. Um, and the math does have a lot more applications. I will post the full exam with worked solutions down in the description so you can download that. And I hand wrote the solutions myself this time. So let's have a look at the questions. I hope me opening this exam doesn't give you too much flashback anxiety if you've sat lots of exams yourself. Um, but first of all, we're showing some pretty easy, I guess, linear algebra questions, a bit of an overview. Linear algebra really deals with lines, planes, and rotations. That's really useful in modeling or computing um, various systems because you can make approximations of more complicated nonlinear systems to be linear, and then you can use linear algebra on them. It really talks about how uh, things relate to each other in space. So first we're asked about the requirement for a set of vectors or lines to be linearly independent um, of each other, so to have no redundancy there when describing a system. Number two is dealing with a matrix. So that's this collection of numbers here. A matrix is an array of numbers um, that in this case are used as a transformation. What is the transformation being done by this matrix? And the answer here is that this is essentially a rotation by 150 degrees in space. Moving on, we're asked um, a question, compute A to 2011. Essentially take that um, matrix of numbers and apply it to something 2011 times. Now that seems really difficult because that's such a big power, but really you need to look at it and figure out that, okay, if this matrix is rotating by 150 degrees, then if you do it 12 times in a row, you're going to end up back where you started, back at the identity. So essentially, um, A to the 12 is the identity. Since 2011 um, is 12 times 167 plus 7, really all you need to do is do A to the power of 7. Then we're asked to create um, or find the inverse of a matrix, and this is our matrix here. The way that we're going to find the inverse is by doing Gauss-Jordan elimination, which essentially means we're going to do a whole bunch of operations on the rows in the matrix. So here we have, I guess, an example of how linear algebra is used in a practical context. We have a system of linear equations, so I guess three equations in x, y, and z. If you look at this, what is given here is actually our A matrix before. If we look at A and we know that that is x, y, and z, then we can see that these equations here are, all the coefficients are encoded in that matrix A. This system is A times x, which is just um, x, y, and z. It's just our space um, vector, so that's what x is. a times x is equal to b, so this here is our vector b. If we want to solve this system of linear equations, what we want to do is solve this equation here for x. So we know A from before and we know B because it's here. If we want to solve this, it involves writing it like X is equal to A inverse B. 
So we know A inverse, we calculated that in the previous question. That's B, so if you do some similar row column operations on this here, you would end up with this vector, which is our x, y, and z solution. Being able to compute um, actually quite large systems of linear equations becomes really useful in engineering or lots of other disciplines, and you might um, find yourself doing it much more on the computer, on something like MATLAB, than on pa pen and paper, but it's good to be able to know and understand what's happening behind the scenes when you ask MATLAB to solve a system for you. We're moving now into the differential equations part of the exam and we're dealing here with partial differential equations, often abbreviated to PDEs. So these partial differential equations involve an unknown multivariable function and its partial derivatives. We're asked here to write down the heat equation and any initial and boundary conditions needed to find a unique solution. This here is the heat equation and it pretty much um, tells you about the distribution of heat in space over time. Again, very useful in a lot of engineering applications. Then we've got some more, I guess, conceptual questions about PDEs, the heat equation, and boundary conditions. So talking about the physical meaning of some boundary conditions, in this case I believe they're talking about if um, spatially at the edge of your distribution your boundary conditions are zero, physically it implies you've got total insulation at those endpoints. Here we've got a similar thing asking about the heat equation but also the wave equation which is similar in a lot of ways except that it describes the movement of waves through space. And then we've got these questions that are asking you to show that certain solutions satisfy certain differential equations. So in this case you're asked to show that this value of u fits within here and that it works out. Again a very similar problem here just being asked to find out um, u of t and ux so we're doing a couple more partial derivatives and finding out that they're consistent with this equation. Here is the, I guess, longer and more difficult PDE question in this exam. Um, but it's something that you'll definitely face if you're doing a lot of PDEs. And uh, really we're given a um, differential equation and we're given a whole bunch of initial and boundary values. And we're asked to find a formal solution. So the first thing that you do in a question like this is actually use separation of variables. So we take what we've been given, which is u of xt. So we've got u in two different variables. Um, and what we want to do is find a v, another function of x and t. It's our solution that can be described as a function of x times a function of t, a product solution, if you will. If we can separate out, separate out our problem into this, then it means we've separated our partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations, and those are gonna be much easier for us to solve. I won't go through all the details here, but of course you can download this full solution in the description, so I encourage you to do that. Many people watching this video may be considering studying or are currently pursuing engineering, math and physics. If that's the case and you want to teach yourself these ideas, or you've seen the content before and find these questions a bit daunting, then you should check out some courses on brilliant.org. You master the concepts by solving fun, challenging problems. You're guided to break down a problem into its component pieces, think clearly through each part, and then build back up to a conclusion. Brilliant can walk you through courses on both linear algebra and differential equations, as well as lots of other math and science topics. This exam might look a bit easier when you truly understand how these concepts relate to each other. If you are considering studying engineering, math, or physics, go to brilliant.org slash tibbies and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. 
Thanks Brilliant for supporting my channel and thank you for watching. I'll be down in the comments answering as many questions as I can.